Let's look at Psalm 84. But first I want to ask, why do we want to look at Psalms? Well, because Psalms is all about emotions and experiences, ones that we can relate to. And so we can find that Psalms is actually a place where we can go to encourage us in life and in our walk with God, because we can relate to the experiences and the emotions being shared there. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. That's how the psalmist starts in Psalm 84. It's like a love song to God. Let's look at verses 1 to 4. How much joy and love the psalmist has for God. And he loves spending time with God. And I really love it because he talks about some swallows and sparrows. Um, they must have a nest in, in, in God's temple. But I think he's jealous of them because he talks about how blessed he is with spending time with God. And yet these swallows and sparrows, they get to spend time with God all day, every day, because they're living in God's temple. What a beautiful love song that this psalmist is giving to God. But then you look at verses 5 to 7 and the tone changes. The psalmist is a realist. He knows that life isn't easy, that following God isn't easy. But he acknowledges that if we just have a heart for pilgrimage, in other words, if we just have a heart to want to follow God, it's like having um, a small mustard seed of faith, just that little seed of faith. Then God gives us the strength to go to him, to dwell with him, to spend time with him. But we have to initiate it. And then he talks about something else, a valley of Barker. This is a valley of weeping. And we will often pass through this, through this valley of weeping. I mean, we all have those valleys, don't we? Times of grief, times of worry, times when things just aren't going well. And if there's ever a time that we need God, it's when we're in this place. Look at verses 8 to 9. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. You help Jacob, now help me. And the psalmist goes on to talk about shields. Now, we've seen plenty of movies and we know what happens with shields in battle. And that's what the Israelites would use their shields for to protect them in battle. But just as the Israelites use these shields, we also have shields. Now, they're not the kind that we'd take into an actual battle, but we still have shields that we use to defend ourselves. We depend on shields like wealth and position to help us think that we're good enough and that we'll be accepted. And what about when we're asked that simple question of, how are you? And we answer, oh, I'm fine. And are we answering that? Because we don't want people to dig deeper and learn about the personal battles, the challenges we're facing inside. We put up this shield so that people don't dig, people don't see deeper. But these shields don't work, do they? They're only external shields. While inside, the battle continues. There's no healing. We're still living in the valley of weeping with the worries, the pain, the grief. And then, of course, there's behaviours that go along with all this. Do we have behaviours that shield our insecurity? Do we use a shield of busyness, perhaps, to stop us getting closer to people closer in relationships because we're afraid to get too close we don't want to reveal too much of ourselves do we gossip perhaps because we want to fit in to a group to be accepted by people and we know these are behaviors we don't want we don't want to be like this but what do we do about it and you know the thing is that God doesn't want us to have these behaviors either we can cry out to God just as the psalmist has. See me, God. See my suffering. My shield is not enough. God, I need your help. Because God can help us with a protective shield, a shield that builds defences inside of us. Spending time with God, we can learn things like our identity is in Christ. It's not 
in who we are or what we do. We can learn that he can give us peace in times of grief, in times of worry, and that he can help provide solutions in times of challenges. And the more we dwell with him, the more he changes us on the inside to not only learn these things, but to accept them as truth in our lives and to live out those changes in our lives. And so let's spend time with him. Spend time reading his word, spend time in prayer with him, spend time with others gathered in his name to worship him and to learn more about him. Psalm ends with being in the house of God, being with God is better than anything. We can trust him. We can trust him with our lives. He can help us in times of need. He can transform us to be a better version of who we are. But we need to take the first step to go to him. So are you going to spend time with him today? Are you going to share with him about your valley of weeping? Dwell with him today so that you too can say how lovely it is to dwell with you, O Lord Almighty. Thank you.